All right, so there's a lot of other pieces in here. So there's some forgery attacks that we can look at. So these are kind of a variation. So we're using the, the legitimate credentials of a bank, for example, but we're kind of using them in a circuitous manner. So it looks like it's coming from the bank, and it's not. So this idea that we, we can read a lot, we use things, also comes from something called a replay. So when a website creates this secure connection, um, if we actually can impersonate them or steal pieces of it, because we've managed to, to adopt some of that, we don't need to know all the details, we just kind of hit push play on a, on a replay, on a recorder. So very similar to, you've probably seen a lot of things in the news about cars being able to be stolen because somebody has captured your remote signature and then it hits the next rolling piece in it. That's kind of what a replay attack does also. So very similar, scary and frightening. So three. So we have all these hardware attacks and we have all these web attacks and Software attacks, we can do some other things. And so software typically has some vulnerabilities. We know when we write all this code, it's never perfect, unfortunately. And so there's a couple of things that really happen a lot. And one of those is memory vulnerabilities. You'd think we've been computing now for, you know, 100 years or whatever, but we still have issues with our memory. So on a computer, you can think of that memory as a set of buckets. And if I get to the end of that set of buckets, I may have something happen weird. And that's that idea of um, resource exhaustion, because we fill that memory, or that we fill the buffer, and all of a sudden, we're pushed into a different area of memory, and we can actually change things directly. So a buffer overflow says, I'm going to store data beyond where it should be stored. So it goes into another memory location. So if you get a computer and it says, man, you've got four gigabytes of RAM, you've got four billion little buckets in your computer. And programs are allocated pieces of that. So in this attack, we try to shove memory items in there and go past that and see if we can get something to happen. So, we have poor coding, we have references, we have code that can actually get outside of its boundaries. So if I'm running, for example, Python in an IDE environment, I'm going to limit where I can go with that. Except there are commands where we can actually drop directly to another piece of memory if we know where it is. So, this is another idea that uh, I'll probably try to find a video that makes some better sense. So there's other things that can happen. We know that uh, we have libraries of software. So even though you buy QuickBooks, it's got libraries from common libraries. And if some of those have, a, have an exploit, bam, we can get in there. So there's a lot of ways we can exploit software. The other piece then, what runs on all of our, our hardware? So switches, our switches, our routers, all those kinds of things we look at, all of them run on, on, on software. So if we can do the same kind of an attack to a, to a device, maybe I can exploit that. So one of the things that, that has happened is Switches are much better than the old style hubs because I can't see all of the communications on the network except when people send a broadcast signal. But what I'd like to do if I'm going to attack their network is I'd like to get a copy of everything that goes through that switch. And switches have the ability to forward all that traffic to an individual port. So I can break into that switch if you don't change your passwords on it. Well, that's one way. But the other way I could do it, switches are designed to be robust. If they go a little off the rails, or something crashes in that code, they resort back to a hub mode, 
where everybody gets everybody's traffic. And so HP switches, it used to be fairly easy to actually exploit those, cause a buffer overflow, and the switch would flip from a switch delivering individual packets to individual ports, and it would become then a hub. And if I could get into, if I were on that hub as a, as a device, I'm getting to see then all of the traffic. And so then I can, I can get a better feel of what's on your network. So software doesn't just affect the pieces on your computer. It's not just Microsoft Office. It's, it's a lot of other things. So make sure you go through these and look at some of these knowledge checks that are in there. But here is where I think the future of cybercrime is landed. Weirdly, I also think it's the future of cyber detection and cyber security side of it. So, we want to look at some new tools. Hmm. Well, the one that's been in the news. So, this is something called ChatGPT. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with it already, right? Any of you? Okay. So, ChatGPT can do a lot of really cool things. It's, a, it's the beginning of some artificial intelligence pieces. So I said, hey, what is a cross-site scripting attack? And it writes me this little code. Okay. Now, it's got some built-in limitations. So if I said, so it's probably going to pop up and say, I cannot provide a code. So, there are some limitations in there. Are there ways to get around those? So, here's where this software in your world and why you're starting to see some emails from our from our college, because guess what this will do? And it's going to sit there for a little bit, and it's going to go blub, 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 blub. Now, depending on how busy it is, I may have the GP3 account, because, but it will, in some cases, usually it's much quicker than this. So it will actually generate content. Well, if I can do that, and I can write a set of rules for something else, I can, I can do a lot of things. Well, it's apparently, one of the things that's happening is it's gotten so popular that it's now very, very lively. The flip side of that is I almost think it's intentional because they want to push you into their paid subscription model. It might be interesting to do, but it does a lot of, it's still chugging away. So we'll look at this a little more, uh, but I want to look at the idea of this cyber security. So, we want to look and see what tools are available, and they're out there for everybody to find most of these tools. And we find all the time, oh, look, somebody broke into a system and they figured it out through finding some common tools. So, one of the places I go typically every day is a place called Slashdot. So, when I look at that, and I say, oh, U.S. federal agencies hacked using legitimate remote desktop tools. Yeah. Well, that doesn't sound, sound handy. So these are legitimate tools. Those are, are tools that you can go buy, they bought. Um, so when I look at this, I, I start seeing, all right, we have all these tools out there. We have things like Kali Linux. We have this new cybersecurity pieces or, or uh, artificial intelligence. So how are we going to use these tools to defend us against the very same attack? So it's very analogous to, if you want to think about it, the, maybe the war in Ukraine because we're using the same technologies on both sides. 
if you don't think that we are fighting a cyber war right now with Russia, I'm going to say that we're, you're probably wrong because we're all doing these same tools. So they're all available and out there for the most part. There are some new ones that pop up every now and then when we have things like Snowden's exposure of what the NSA is doing. So what kind of tools are we going to find? So I'm going to pause this. There is a video in the class that you will... I, I can't record the video on the video because it, it messes life up. All right, so cybersecurity is going to be very useful. We're going to have more people able to do things. We know we don't have enough cybersecurity people, so one person now can run an entire artificial intelligence lab, for example, and maybe we can prevent some of these things. But I do think it's a little bit like, you guys remember a movie called The Minority Report out a few years ago? Where some of these predictions might be a little frightening. So, large organizations are going to be the first, obviously, because they can afford it, where, you know, Peru's day, we're going to be a little further away from that. But companies are wanting to use some way to deal with it. So if I can get into network security or endpoints or identity, which seems like I really push that I'd be Amazon, so all of these are, are important tools that we're going to be utilizing. So we may look with and try to find out how we can get to that. So if somebody that if we don't secure the artificial intelligence properly, it could also be used as an attack against us, or somebody could create their own using the same thing. So these are going to be uh, a lot of our focus in the next 10 years, I think. Even the aspect of ransomware and some of these other attacks are going to be driven by artificial intelligence because the better these people can create a ransomware attack, the better they can get into companies. I can already see using something like artificial intelligence to get a better target profile of my company so that I know I'm going to target Peru State College. I set my, my uh, AI and start looking for all the information I can find about everybody that works at Peru. Because once I find some information, that gives me an insight. Maybe I look at Peru and I have that, that same AI I try to find out all the information it can about our network. So not only can it just try to probe the network directly, but maybe it even goes out and looks at contracts. It says, oh, they've got a contract with HP to provide switches, so we know some information about what's inside of it. So I think it's really a, a little, little frightening. Endpoint, a couple of things I want to make sure we have in our brain. So the endpoint is typically our computer, it's a wall thermostat, it's an IoT device. So when I say endpoint protection, we're trying to protect the very fringes of the, the those pieces on our network that are that are vulnerable. So make sure that you have read through this. My questions will never be is this a worm or is this a virus based on this behavior? What I want to look at is the totality of it, and then we want to look at what kind of solutions we can come up to. So one of the problems we have with any of these, so we could create artificial intelligence to do all kinds of things, but it's not the artificial intelligence that I'm worried about, it's the human intelligence behind these operations. And it's the human intelligence of the average user who's very smart, skilled in whatever they're they're trained on, but maybe they don't have any cybersecurity knowledge. Or, you know, one of the biggest attack vectors in hospitals is actually doctors. They've crammed their brain with all kinds of knowledge about human anatomy and diseases and all these different things. The last thing they give a crap about is whether an email is spam or not. And so they're more likely than anybody else in your hospital to click on spam mail. And get infected. And I know that's strange to think about because you think about these guys as very, very intelligent, but it's where that intelligence is applied. The same thing happens at a lot of universities. 
the number of people with PhDs that click on spamware and spyware and all different kinds of things in their computers have gone to that mess, it's pretty frightening. That's not their area of expertise. So I I would make a horrible brain surgeon, but the brain surgeon might make a horrible cybersecurity analyst. So I want you guys to think about that. Because people are our biggest issue. So a lot of our focus is going to be on how do we get people to quit making dumb decisions. So artificial intelligence may help that. So we have this coming from both directions. So it's it's a little frightening what AI can do. Um, it's also very interesting. So um, we want to make sure that we're all on, on board with what kind of technologies and things are out there.